In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve the emitter feedback bias circuit. So we have a 12 volt uh, voltage supply source connected to this circuit. And we're going to set RC to 200 ohms. RE is also going to be set to the same thing. That's 200 ohms. And RB, we're going to set that to 110 kilo ohms. And the HFE, or the beta, of the NPN transistor, that's going to be 200. So with this information, go ahead and calculate the base voltage, the emitter voltage, and also the collector voltage. Determine the base current, the emitter current, the collector current, and also VCE. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. So the first thing that we need to do is determine the base current in this circuit. In order for us to do that, we need to come up with a formula. So according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that the sum of the voltages in a closed circuit is or will add up to zero. So we're going to start from the collector supply voltage, which is VCC, and work our way to the ground. So as we travel from VCC through RB, we're going to have a voltage drop of VRB. And then from there, we're going to travel through the transistor from the base to the emitter. So we're going to have a voltage drop of VBE, which is, we're going to use 0.7 for the, uh, the VBE value. It can range from 0.6 to 0.7, but we're going to use 0.7. And then traveling through RE to get to the ground, that's going to be VRE. That's the voltage drop across the emitter resistor. And so all of that should equal 1. Now the voltage across the base resistor, RB, is going to be the current flowing through it, which is IB times RB. VBE, we set that to 0.7, and VRE is going to be equal to the current flowing through it, the emitter current, times the emitter resistor. So these two terms, I'm going to move it to the other side. So they're going to change from negative to positive. So I'm going to have VCC minus 0.7 and that's going to be equal to IB times RB plus IE times RE. Now the emitter current is equal to the base current plus the collector current. Now the collector current is equal to beta times the base current. So factoring out IB, we're going to have 1 plus beta times IB is equal to IE. So we're going to replace IE with what we have here. So right now we have VCC minus 0.7. That's equal to IB times RB and then plus IB times beta plus 1 times RE. Now the next thing we're going to do is factor. IB on the right side. So we have VCC minus 0.7. That's going to be equal to IB times RB plus beta plus 1 times RE. So now we're going to divide both sides by this term, and that will give us the final formula. So IB is going to be the collector supply voltage, VCC, minus 0.7 divided by the base resistor plus beta plus 1 times the emitter resistor. So now let's clear some of this stuff away. And then let's plug in the numbers that we have into that formula. So IB is going to be VCC, which is 12 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by the base resistance, which is 110 kilo ohms, plus beta is 200, so beta plus 1, that's going to be 201, times the emitter resistance. It's 200 ohms, but I'm going to convert that to kilo ohms. 200 divided by 1,000 is 0.2, so it's 0.2 kilo ohms. Now, keep this in mind. When you divide volts by kilo ohms, you're going to get the current in milliamps. 
If you divide volts by ohms, you get the current in amps. So 12 minus 0.7 is 11.3 volts. 201 times 0.2 is 40.2 plus 110. So this is 150.2 with the unit kilo ohms. So the base current in this problem is 0 0.07523 milliamps. So that's our rounded answer. And now that we have the base current, we can now calculate the collector current. So the collector current is going to be beta times the base current. So beta is 200 times a base current of 0 0.07523. That gives us a collector current of 15.05, if you round it, milliamps. Now the next thing that we need to calculate is the emitter current. The emitter current is the sum of the base current and the collector current. So it's IB plus IC. So IC, the exact answer that I got is 15.046. If we add that to 0 0.07523, we get 15.12123, which is approximately, we could say 15.12 milliamps. So that is the emitter current. Keep in mind the arrows represent the direction of conventional current. Electron flow is in the other direction. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and calculate VE, the emitter voltage, which is the potential at point E. That's going to equal the voltage drop across RE. So it's simply IE times RE assuming that if we set the ground potential to zero volts, this equation will be true. So IE, that's 15.12 milliamps. And we're going to multiply it by the emitter resistance in kilo ohms. So 15.12 times 0.2 gives you an emitter voltage of 3.02 volts. Now the next thing we're going to calculate is the base voltage, which is the emitter voltage plus 0.7. So 3.024 plus 0.7 is 3.724 volts. So that is the base voltage. Now to get the collector voltage, it's going to be VCC minus the voltage drop across RC. So it's VCC minus the collector current times RC. So 12 minus the collector current of 15.05 milliamps times RC in kilo ohms, which is 0.2. So 12 minus 15.05 times 0.2 will give you a collector voltage of 8.99 volts. So now that we have the collector voltage, we can calculate VCE. So that is the potential across the collector and the emitter of the NPN transistor. So 8.99 minus 3.024. So VCE is 5.966 volts. So it's very close to 6 volts, which is what we want. When designing an amplifier, particularly with this circuit, you want VCC to be one half. I mean, you want VCE. Let me write this down. You want VCE to be one half of VCC. That is the, the ideal point of which you want to design your amplifier at. So half of 12 is 6 which is kind of what we have here. When VCE is half of VCC, you get the maximum operation of the amplifier, which is what you want. 
Now, this circuit, the emitter feedback bias circuit, is very similar to the collective feedback bias circuit in the sense that the changes to the collective current is relatively independent to changes in temperature. When the temperature goes up, beta increases. And for a given value of IB, that will cause the collector current to increase. And if the collector current goes too high, the transition, I mean, the transistor rather, can go into the saturation region. And we don't want that. We want to keep the transistor operating in the active region. And we want to set VCE equal to half of VCC so that the amplifier is operating at maximum capacity. But with this particular circuit, as the temperature goes up, beta goes up, and the collector current goes up. Now, when the collector current goes up, VC goes down, and VE goes up. Now, let's think about that. When VE goes up, the base voltage will go up because VB is always 0.7 more than VE. Now, as VB goes up, the difference between VCC and VB, that's going to go down. Because this is constant. If this increases due to the negative sign, that term decreases. And this is the voltage across the base resistor. So since RB is fixed, as VB goes up and this expression goes down, that means that the base current will decrease. And as the base current decreases, the collector current will decrease. So when temperature goes up, the collector current will go up because beta goes up. But because of the design of this specific circuit, due to the presence of the emitter resistor, the base current will go down, bringing down the collector current. So we have like a system of equilibrium here. Where the temperature goes up, the collector current goes up, but the circuit causes the collector current to go back down. And so it's very hard for this circuit to enter into the saturation region due to these two competing forces. And so that's one of the advantages of using the emitter feedback circuit, as well as the collector feedback bias circuit. Now, for those of you who might be confused in terms of how I got to uh, these expressions, like how I know what's going to go up and what's going to go down, here's what you can do. Well, here's some formulas that can help you. We know that IC is equal to beta times IB. So as IB goes up, IC is going to go up. So that covers the first part. Now for the second part, let's say that's VCC and this is RC. And then here is the transistor. So this point is VC. VC is the difference between VCC minus the voltage drop across RC. So as the collector goes up, notice the negative sign, that's going to decrease VC. So that's where I get uh, that expression that VC is inversely related to IC. So this is VE, and here we have RE. Now, as VC goes down, VE goes up. But really, you need to look at these two. IC is approximately equal to IE, especially if HFE is 100 or more. Now, VE is equal to IE times RE, which is approximately IC times RE. So if IC goes up, VE is going to go up. So that's why this goes up. Now, as VE goes up, you know that VB is going to go up because VB is 0.7 more than VE. Now, this is the base resistor, and this is VB. IB is going to be the voltage across RB, which is the difference between VCC and VB, divided by RB. So as VB goes up, once again, we have a negative sign. IB is going to go down. 
So you could see the inverse relationship there. And then according to this equation again, if IB goes down, then that's going to bring down IC. So that's how I was able to come up with the relationship between these different variables. It's by using uh, the equations that gives you those variables. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be helpful. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button, comment if you have any questions, and definitely subscribe to this channel. Thanks again for watching.